talk about RHF. Uh, leading cause of joint failure is boot contamination. The leading choice of, I mean, uh, cause of joint failure is boot contamination. This, we're talking about CV axles here. This being a CV axle. Now one side of this sucker plunges and the other side of it, huh? this is the longer one, and the other side of it, and look at this goes out into your rotor. This is the nut that holds it on. And this is the end that plunges right here. That one there. See how it plunges? Now the little clamps off of it. Why does it have to plunge? Why does it need to do that? Why, I mean, why does it need to? Notice how this one here is actually a, a totally different creature than this one out here. This one here doesn't plunge at all. It just turns. Huh? To travel with the suspension. Yep. All right, and in here, we have balls and little channels and all that. So what is the how that works. Now, why do they call it a constant velocity joint? What is a constant velocity joint? What's the deal on that? All right, constant velocity joint. Brandon, when you end up in the corner out there in the end of the uh, breezeway, there's a drive shaft, a plain old drive shaft. Go get it. Yeah, and, uh, you got 90 seconds to get out there and get back in here. If you ever taken, how many of you guys have ever taken a long extension and a plain old wiggler and stuck it on a bolt up here on a transmission or something? And you're spinning it with something, it's going. And whenever you're spinning this plain old, ex hello there, Levi. You're spinning this extension that's got this plain old, and I'm talking about just a cross axle CV joint, and it goes, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it actually has, it's slow and fast and slow and fast and tries to straighten out and all that nonsense. Well, if you get the little one that's for a, uh, and if I had if I had been prepared properly for this, I'd have this to show you, but you can see it in the shop. The one that goes on an impact wrench has got a little slotted ball in it, and it actually doesn't do any of that stuff. It's just a real smooth turn. And, uh, all right, look at that. This kind of drive shaft here... This kind of drive shaft right here, see, it's only got two axes. All right, now if you bend that pretty sharp and you turn it, then you're going to have issues. One of those things snap? Huh? One of those things snap? No, they won't necessarily snap, but well, unless you go over here, you can't bend it, bend it tight enough to make it snap. Now it'll actually, but you got steering, you know, you're steering. I'm so strong, yeah. yeah. Well, you can you can break one, but what I'm getting at is the point is this one here gets slower and faster, and slower and faster. Tries to slow up, speed up, slow down, speed up as these angles change. If you get it very steep, right? So you can't really put this on on some dog on four wheel drive pickups. Will have these out there in the front wheels, and that don't really work all that well, you know. Particularly at speed. If you're driving at road speed and you're doing an S curve somewhere in the Austrian mountains, you don't want some nonsense like this out there on your steering and pulling wheels. So what you're going to do is you put your you put your CV axle on here. This son of a gun here can bend real sharp, and it turns real smooth the whole time it's been real sharp. It doesn't get slow and fast, slow and fast, slow and fast. That's why they call it constant velocity. Yeah, now, the, the reason that the, the reason the inner CV joint, joint uh, has got the plunge is because what happens when your wheels go up and down? When your wheels go up and down, the axles have to get longer and shorter. The, the one on the regular drive shaft, uh, the one that I just showed you here, it actually can slip in and out of the transmission just a little bit. Okay. And it's got long splines because as the axle in the back goes up, this thing here is going to be going in and out because it's going to get, you know, the geometry changes. It right. needs to get longer and shorter. It has to be able to do that dynamically while it's going on. So that's how that works. Okay. Okay, so now we know the difference between a constant velocity joint and a regular universal joint. This is manual transmission test five. All right. Okay, so GI, AAR, and NTP are variations of the Rezepa CV joint. There are several different types of CV joints. Where's your book? Get your book there? You got, picture? you got pictures? You got pictures of a Rezepa CV joint in there? What does it look like? That's what we were just showing you. 
the Rezepa CB joint? Is this one right here? That's Rezepa. Right there's kind of what they call a tripod joint. It's got three rollers in it. See, the end came off of that one. But see, that's a, that's a nice, clean Rezepa joint. And if you see, it's got those little channels of balls roll in that match on the inside and the outside. And you can actually take this thing apart, basically, if you do it right. That's what it looks like on the inside. Now, if you wanted to take it apart, what you could do, and we do this next semester in driveline, basically, uh, you're going to pry that up and you're going to get them balls out of one at a time, and then you can turn that little cage and you can turn this and you can have all this all in, all in your hand. And if you're going to pull one of these apart and examine it and see if it's okay, you're going to look for little places where those balls have been riding. See, I can actually move that with my finger now that i got a shaft out of it, up there to where I can get them balls out of there. So you get a little pocket screwdriver or something, you can work them little balls out of that CV actual. But that's a Rezepa joint right there. But uh, anyway, that's false. Uh, this is actually, the, those other things, you know, are not variations of the Rezepa CV joint. This is the most common one that you see. Now some of your Renaults had some that were made totally different. They had little knuckles on the end of the shaft, and, you know, that were made on the end of the shaft, and then you, the other part went in there, and in order to put a boot on that, you had a set of fastigiated rods that you would put motor oil on, and you would have to slide a little end of that CV boot up over it and pop down on the shaft, and that was a booger bear, one of them Renaults. Now this right here is a Volkswagen uh, rabbit. Actually, rabbits and bugs both had a CV joint like that one right there, and it's a Rezepa joint of sorts. But it's a sort of a flat one, you know, it's basically the same principle that it operates. Outer CV joints wear at a faster rate than inner ones, is that true? How many times have you ever seen a worn out inner CV joint? No. You know, the inner CV joint being the one that's, that's basically built like this. That's the one that plunges, right? So you got these little rollers on there. And those little rollers are real smooth the way they roll, but they go in and out of them little channels. Uh, the inner ones don't wear very often, but I'll tell you what we did see on uh, Charles's car, the, the, yeah, the drafting instructor, had a, he's got a 2000 Monte Carlo, and he had an inner one that had uh, the little rollers and stuff came out of there and all that, and it was kind of binding up, and when you drive the car, the engine would try to move back and forth. <laughs> it was a weird feeling, <laughs> and, but whenever you looked under there, you could basically even see what was going on, what hard troubleshooting, and so we put a CV axle in there. Huh? The number one is actually false. The leading is not boot contamination. What happens is the boot will bust, and when the boot busts, when these uh, accordion, yeah, it gets a bunch of dirt and grit and stuff up in there with the. Uh, and what do you hear when you're turning the wheels and you got a bad CV joint? Click, 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 click. When you turn it quiet and turn it uh, sharp and go, inner and outer CV joints move in the same way. We just demonstrated that that's not true. Inner and outer CV joints do not move in the same way. The most common CV joint design is the tripod joint. Actually, the most common is the Rezepa. As at least it has been in my experience. All right. Everybody got that? Four is false. Five is false. Huh? Number two is uh, false, too, uh, because there are, those aren't variations of the, NT, of the uh, Rezepa. Uh, the most, uh, let's see, the inner CV joint is designed to plunge in and out. Is that true? Yes. I just showed you that, didn't I? Uh, the inner CV joint is designed to plunge in and out. The cross groove CV joint is commonly used on European vehicles and applications where space is limited. And that's what they're calling this, a cross groove joint. So if you take that one there, this one right here, and you got to bump it to get it started. Because well, this one here is kind of been uh, rode hard and put up yet. You can take that kind of a gun and turn it. And turn it a little bit. See this particular one is, is kind of used up and if you put it together the wrong way, in other words if you put it together kind of backwards and, and usually students will do that when they're working around with this, what will happen is they wind up with a situation where the they can't get out. Now see I've taken this one, I've turned that thing sideways. Right? All right. And I roll that out of there. See that? Is that a cool little joint right there? And some of them, you know, the grooves are cut in a different way. Now look, look at this one here. And see that little the inside part of it? Now I can take that 
And I can pop them balls out of there. And I can pop them balls out of there. And uh, so I've got all these balls in my hand on the big old steel ball. If you use those in the marble game at the school, I found out when I was in elementary school, they ban you from the marble games. Because you wind up, of course, I got there with those little great big steel balls. And here's your various composite pictures. Oops. Oh, that's good. The good reflex is catch that ball before it rolled off. And that one I didn't know. See that right there? See the inside of that thing? All right, I'm going to pass these parts around. Where'd that ball go? Let me find it. There it is. Right there. Here, I'm going to pass that over there. Archie, I want you to, while you're doing paying attention, I want you to put this back together. Okay? Catch that ball. My dad actually made it. Huh? My dad actually made it the rod. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty tough. Yep. All right, let's move. Uh, he's making a lot of noise over there. He needs a rag or something, don't he? All right. All right. Now, taking. Um, uh, let's look on to this next one. The cross screw CV joint commonly used in European vehicle applications where space is limited. And that's going to be true. And the last one is it's easier or less costly to use the ball and cage design rather than the spider assembly in CV joint construction. That's actually false. Okay. The ball and cage is what I was just showing you there, and that's also where you know, your resemblance has got that. Which of the following steps is done first when disassembling a resemblance joint? And that's the kind of like I had in my hand a few minutes ago. Uh, tilt the inner race to one side or remove the ball one ball at a time. That's not right. Check the grease for grit and other contamination. Is that right? Uh, align the two cage windows with the grooves in the outer housing and lift the cage in inner race. Out of the bearing. Out of the housing, I'm sorry. That's not right either. Though. The first thing you got to do is you got to remove the, the boot clamps and the boot. Get those out of there. That's what you got to do. Number nine or number all? Number nine is a dog. Probably. It sounds like a sort of an error on the person that built the test and it wasn't me. Uh, which of the following steps is done last when disassembling a Rosetta joint? Uh, a needle bearings. Are there, are there needle bearings in a Rosetta joint? What page are you on there? Uh, all right, find, let me find that page. What or what, where are the needle bearings? The needle are there, there ain't no needle bearings in there. The needle bearings are in the uh, other type joint, right? The tripod joint, the one with the uh, the plunges. Got that? Huh? There aren't any needles in there. Yeah. yeah. Needle bearing. It's not. So, is, what about the uh, the uh, roller balls? They got. Is there, are they in there? What's the next? What's the last step? What we're talking about? Which of the following steps is done last when you put you put the needle bearings aren't even there? Now what about the roller balls? Is that it? Yeah. The cage. And then you got your spider. Actually, that's going to be the cage. See what I mean? You're, you're going to take your, uh, uh, basically the way I put one back together, you know, is I put the, uh, and I put the cage in there, and I put the center in there, and then I put the balls in there. Uh -huh. So I don't know where they're coming from with this particular question. It's kind of silly. Uh, so... But which of the following statements about CV joints is incorrect? Uh, the outer CV joint is fixed and does not have the ability to capability to plunge. I just showed you that a few minutes ago. Didn't I? The outer CV joint moves more than 45 degrees to follow the steering range of the front wheels. Incorrect statements. What we're looking for. Okay, CV joint maintains shaft speed by bisecting the angle of the joint, and then CV joints don't use bevel gears, so D is the one. There's no bevel gears in a CV joint. Number 12, all of the following are common symptoms of CV joint wear except we got A, popping or clicking noises when turning, B, a chattering noise when backing up, uh, C, a clunk when accelerating or decelerating, or D, a humming or growling sound that changes with vehicle speed. Uh, the, cla the chattering noise when backing up. You know, typically your CV joints are going to pretty much act the same way. On a drive shaft that's got dry U-joints on it, though, um, it may click going one way and squeak going the other. And on this, one, on this particular one here on 12, 
The one we're looking at there, 12 is B. Uh, you don't have a chattering noise when you're backing it up. You know, it's not really related to CV joints where. And, and actually, yeah, 13 is a foul up. That is a, uh, that's the same question that was on there earlier. That's uh, an error. Okay. So number 14, let's just jump over 13. Yeah, it's a gimme. 13 is a gimme. 14, which of the following steps is done a last one? Disassembling uh, a repa joint. Is it a repa joint? Which one? What do you think, guys? Everybody like, hey, tilt the inner race toward one side or move one ball at a time. Uh, check for grease and grit and other contamination. Align two cage windows with the grooves in the outer housing. Lift the cage and inner race out of the housing. Remove the CV joint boot clamps and the boot. Yeah, 14 is C. See the way they got these. This particular question, whoever wrote these questions here, was all crazy and everything. You see? But you're not going to remove the CV joint clamps and boot last. Uh, you're not going to check for grease and other contamination last, and you're not going to tilt it to remove one ball at a time last. The last thing you're going to do is lift it out of there. See, so they did do that one right. When installing wheel bearings, you're supposed to tighten a spindle nut to what? 25-pound hmm? foot. Foot-pounds, we say in the shop. Yeah. Pound-foot, they say in the book. Yeah, pound-feet. They're going to think you're a nut because they pound-feet in the shop somewhere. You go out there saying pound-feet, they're going to think you either read too much or something. Sealed wheel bearings, A, do not need periodic maintenance, B, are made of heat-treated steel to resist wear, a C, are permanently lubricated, or D, all of the above. Now, some of your wheel bearings, believe it or not, have got little a, a little row of magnets in them, and your uh, wheel speed sensor reads off those magnets. It's in the, you know that little seal that the bearing has got, I mean, that keeps the grease in the bearing? It'll have little uh, magnets in there. It's pretty cool. And they make a little thing. It's got a window in it that you can hold up there and see if there's a problem with any of those. Uh, you know, you can't see them unless you actually put something up there that will realign and move. You know, that's a complicated thing I was just trying to tell you. Um, and uh, that particular one is going to be a dog. Yeah, all the way above. Uh, a damper is what? Somebody tell me what a damper is. Is it A, a product that removes moisture from a joint? B. Wait a minute. That's that's damping, isn't it? If you remove moisture from a joint, isn't that damping it? No, it's not. No, I'm sorry. Uh, a balance weight fitted around a half shaft. Uh, material used to create steel alloys or a tool used to burp a boot. Have you ever burped a boot? I hadn't either, so I don't know what you're talking about. And it's going to be a, it's going to be my boy. Balance fitted around a half shaft. A balance weight fitted around a half shaft. Now I will tell you this. Sometimes. Whenever you have the half shaft, uh, you get the half shaft out of the car, you're going to notice it's got a balance, uh, I mean, a balance weight on it or a damper. And the one you get from the parts store may not have that, you know, so occasionally you have that. Now, you know about torque steer, don't you? We talk about torque steer. When you're taking off, when you're taking off and it goes to one side, you probably had it on your hot rod front wheel drive car. Huh? Don't you like front wheel drive car? No, How come? Okay. Well, anyway, they they actually will go to the little jerky to the right or the left, depending on which half shaft is shorter. Remember why I did that? We talked about it one time before. Yeah. If you get on it pretty hard, uh, if you get on it pretty hard, the uh, the short axle side will try to roll faster than the long axle side, and it will try to turn in that direction. So if I've got a uh, the Honda car is going to go like a Honda Civic will go in the opposite direction. From other cars because the engines in there backwards. Remember that? Well, I told you the Escort timing belts on the passenger side and the Honda Civic timing belts on the driver's side, <laughs> and the engine turns in opposite direction on those cars. You know, it turns backwards to the other one. You know, used to the only engine that turned backwards that we knew about was a Corvair. And so anyway, huh? my dad used to. Uh, my dad had a shop out there in Daleville. And somebody says, uh, can you work on a Corvair? And he says, well, it's in the summertime, and I don't usually work on Corvairs in the summertime. Wow. They said, what do you mean you don't work on the summertime? He goes, well, I work on one. i got to close the shop doors. And he said, why do you have to close the shop doors? He goes, because if somebody sees me working on it, they'll bring me a nothing. 
you know, there was a lot of them running up and down the road in the 60s, you know, and everybody wanted to work on a Corvair. Air-cooled, six-cylinder, yeah. horizontal opposed thing. I drove one. I drove a Corvair Spider in oh, 63 right. model, you know. Crankshaft like a brake on them things. That's what happened to mine. Brake, brake, like, pop, just 